Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be discussing the new moon in Capricorn, January the 11th, 2024. The new moon is, depending on where it impacts your horoscope or in relation to your sun sign, will begin to describe where your attention, your priority is most directed. The flavor or the overall influence behavior of Capricorn is business, practicality, achieving your goals, and kind of like jump-starting the new year with what you want to achieve and accomplish. And that's being set up with that influence and characteristics of Capricorn. I'm going to be discussing how this chart is going to be unpacking the world over the next four weeks. And this new moon is in harmony with Uranus. Very favorable energy. Uranus is innovative. It's progressive. It opens up new ideas, new options, new technologies. But before I get deeper into what this new moon is trying to manifest for everybody, I'm also going to be discussing the important planetary events, especially between the new moon on the 11th to the full moon. Well, that full moon, when what's being begun in the new moon, starts to more fully manifest, or it's a time of things coming to light, a time of culmination. But during these next couple of weeks, the sun in Capricorn will, on the 20th, move into Aquarius. Now that's important because Pluto, that went briefly into Aquarius last end of March to early June 2023, been discussing it in all my videos, once every 243 years. Then transformational Pluto retrograded back into Capricorn last June 2023 until the middle of January, till January the 20th, 2024, where Pluto is now back in Aquarius through the end of, of August. And then it goes back into Capricorn, September through the middle of November, one last time, just to make sure we learned our lessons of Pluto transiting Capricorn. So on January the 20th, not only is the sun leaving conventional Capricorn and moving into progressive uh, alternative Aquarius, on the 20th, Pluto is also moving into Aquarius. So that's a big deal on the 20th, so I'm going to talk more about that. But also, the Sun's in Capricorn the first 20 days. Ambitious, assertive Mars is in Capricorn from January the 4th to February the 12th, once every two years. Ambitious Mars does best when it transits Capricorn. Capricorn is the exalted sign for Mars. But also Pluto, those first 20 days, still in Capricorn. On January the 23rd, after all the heavy hitters have moved on, but then pleasure-seeking, contented Venus, relational Venus, moves into Capricorn. So we got to look to what does all those transits mean and how it might apply to your um, sun sign or your rising sign. So there's a lot to unpack, not just the full, not just the new moon chart, but important planetary transits, and especially the transits of the uh, Pluto, um, Mars, uh, uh, the Sun, all moving through Capricorn. And what does that all mean for you? But before I unpack all of this and go into more detail to illuminate what's happening in the world, if you enjoy these kinds of videos and would like to see more of them, click like and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the notification bell so you can receive the latest postings. 
And if you go into the description box underneath the video, you'll find a link that takes you to my website where you can book an astrology reading or inquire about my two question offer. Now let's start with this powerful new moon in Capricorn. As I said, the characteristics of Capricorn is being organized, being practical, being disciplined, taking on major responsibilities. It's all the kind of the focus of Capricorn energy that it will start manifesting. But this new moon in Capricorn will be at 20 degrees of Capricorn. There are 30 degrees in a sign. Uranus will be at 19 degrees of Taurus. Taurus is an earth sign compatible with Capricorn in earth sign. So this new moon that's trying to bring in commence new energies, new focus, is in harmony with Uranus. Uranus can be technological, advancing, futuristic, unconventional, original thinking. That new moon being supported favorably by Uranus can bring a lot of exciting new ideas and opportunities to the world. That new moon is also forming a favorable sextile, that's a 60 degree angle of positive opportunities, will be at 20, the Neptune will be at 25 Pisces. So the new moon to the Uranus is within one degree of orb of influence. That's very tight focused energy. And that Uranus is that is uh, wants to bring some really progressive um, uh, new ideas, thinking out of the box energies. But the Neptune is five degrees. Now it's getting a little wider. Um, it's still influencing, but the big punch is Uranus in Taurus. Um, now that's going to be really favorable for just being more open, not afraid of technology or thinking out of the box. But the Neptune vibration, Neptune when it's positive with this new moon, Neptune is charitable, it's inspirational, it's empathetic, um, and so there is this visionary energy, that's the Neptune, that the Uranus could be thinking out of the box and really trying to initiate exciting new directions. This is what's impacting the world. And if it's impacting your horoscope, you'll also ride that train. So if you have planets positively impacting 20 degrees of Capricorn or 19 degrees of Taurus, um, then you'll, you'll get swept away with all this progressive new energies. Now Mars in Capricorn, it's going to be in Capricorn, it's exalted sign, giving the best of ambitious, assertive, courageous, courageous Mars from January the 4th till February the 12th once every two years. But on the day of the new moon, the Mars will have moved to five degrees of Capricorn. Jupiter is at five degrees of Taurus. Taurus and Earth sign, Capricorn and Earth sign, very compatible. When Mars is in harmony or this trying to Jupiter, whatever the Mars is trying to achieve, you know, take risk, going for it, um, giving that strong drive and motivation, it's being very favorably supported by Jupiter. Jupiter is expansive, it's lucky. Mars, Jupiter um, will be able to um, manifest successful, that's Jupiter, work opportunities and goals, that's Mars. But better yet, the midpoint between the Mars and the Jupiter is Saturn. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. And there's this strong Capricorn and therefore Saturn influence. But having this Mars 
to Jupiter, trine, and then the midpoint to the Saturn, I call that a mini grand trine. And in many ways, it's even more productive than the auspicious grand trine, where everything starts to flow so easily, but sometimes a grand trine can be lazy, or it's like you've got this, it'll all work out, and then you're not as motivated because you have all this overconfidence. Kind of the downside at times with the grand trine. But a mini grand trine is um, you don't have that you see all this opportunity, but it's not being handed to you. You realize you're going to have to put some effort into it. And the Mars is the focal point of that effort. And, and or the Saturn is the focal point. Saturn, the discipline, the focus, the concentration. Um, so this is... So to Mars, to Jupiter, midpoint to Saturn could not be better economically over for the world in general. In fact, Jupiter at five degrees of Taurus, Saturn will be at four degrees of Pisces. So the first couple of weeks of January, Jupiter is at five Taurus going direct since December the 20, 30th. So it's really bringing more and more opportunities. But by the, um, the middle of January, well, more like the, um, yeah, around the 15th or so, now Saturn will be at five degrees of Pisces with the Jupiter just moving off of five degrees of Taurus. All that means is the uh, Saturn in Pisces, a water sign, in harmony with Jupiter in Taurus, an earth sign. Earth and water is compatible energies. When Saturn and Jupiter are in harmony with each other, it brings economic growth, economic stability. And then, so that's the first good solid first three weeks of January and the new year. But in the middle of all that, January the 11th, now we're having this new moon in Capricorn with that Mars-Jupiter bringing a lot of ambitious support, but the new moon is in harmony with that progressive um, Uranus. So this is very favorable energies um, overall. Now, the um, Mercury is the planet of communications, information, what you're thinking about, what you're planning. It's towards the end of Sagittarius. Uh, several days later, it will move back into Capricorn. But it, the Mercury is pulling away by two degrees from Neptune. Now, we have planets, as they transit, can start applying um, to a conjunction, a square, an opposition. A, a transiting planet could be approaching um, or applying this energy of whatever the aspect is, conjunction, square, opposition. After it hits exact, it then starts to separate. Um, but when it's still within a couple of degrees of the separation, even though it's technically moved on, it's still vibrating. So we have to be careful with Mercury in Sagittarius forming a, a square. It's moving off of this 90 degree angle, the square of this inner conflict and tension only by two degrees. Now, Sagittarius is very expansive. It's very optimistic. So we're making all these plans, Mercury in general for the world, and there's a lot of stability with uh, business, career, whether it's for the world, whether it's your sense of feeling more uh, optimistic and confident about um, your security going into 2024. Um, but Mercury 
in Sagittarius, you might be feeling um, more, you know, um, expansive, more optimistic, uh, you know, really wanting to go for the big picture. That's all well and good, except the Mercury is still being influenced by nebulous, foggy Neptune. So your thinking Mercury, your planning Mercury, is not as sharp as it could be, because Neptune brings in this foggy, nebulous, unfocused energies. So, you, so with all this good energy, Maybe on the positive side for many of you, the Mercury Neptune is you're still a little hesitant and Capricorn energy and that Capricorn is strong is also very cautious. Um, it doesn't, that Capricorn is not inclined to take big, bold risk. So maybe the Mercury to the Neptune is you're having a sense that this is going to be a good month, this is going to be a good year, but you don't want to make big over-the-top um, uh, actions and taking big risks. You want to be a little bit more cautious because you're not completely confident and sure. Your planning and thinking of Mercury doesn't have all the clarity yet because of the foggy Neptune. Now, the, um, before I go to these important planetary events and these transits, um, and what are these big themes, a little numerology. 2024, 2024 adds up to eight. In basic numerology, the eight is about power and prosperity. Um, now, a numerologist many years ago was, was explaining the basics to me, and he said that when you're in your personal eight year is when your ship comes in, or when you're building the ship, the, the foundation to send it out. Now, what do, I talk, what do I mean by the numerological personal number year? 2024 is an eight year for the world. Pretty good economically. You then take the month you're born. If you're, if you're born in January, that's number one. Um, and if you're born in February, it's number two. Then you take the day. Um, so if you're born on January the 30th, then it'd be a one and a three. So you'd be a four, um, what you're born with. Then you add the four to the 12, because that, or the four to the eight of 2024. And eight and three is 11. 11 breaks down to two. Two is about relationships. So if you're in a num if you're beginning now a number one year, a number a personal number one year, new beginnings, um, taking the courage, taking risks. Number two, relationships, partnerships. Three, it's more about self-expression with communication, promoting, selling yourself and ideas. Four is about a lot of hard work, but to build a solid foundation. Five is all this playful, creative energies. Um, can be children, can be some romance. Six is often associated with marriage. Six is a lot of this inspiring, creative energies. Seven on the seventh day, God rested. Seven is a number numerologically about resting, about um, soul searching, introspect and being introspective, maybe just kind of reviewing where you've been in the last several years. 
Then you go into the number eight year and your ship comes in, or you have an opportunity to start building it, like building a new business. Number nine is the last number, the endings, the wrapping up, or the planting of the seeds to move to be blossoming more into the next year of number one. So, just a little preview of numerology. Now, looking at the important planetary events, on the 12th, the day after the new moon, Mars, assertive Mars, in responsible focus Capricorn, will be in harmony, a trine to Jupiter. Now, I already talked about how the Mars is trining Jupiter in the, sol in the uh, new moon chart. It's, that's on the 11th. It's just that it's more tightly aspected um, on the 12th, if we want to like split hairs here. And so the 12th is a really favorable day, depending on the rest of your chart, but overall, or maybe just in general for the economy, but that Mars-Jupiter could be really favorable just after the new moon of new beginnings to be launching new business projects. On the 15th, the Sun in Capricorn will be in harmony with Neptune. A Sun-Neptune can be a very spiritual day, a very inspiring day, a day where you want to find more meaning. Um, it can also be more healing, more empathetic. On the, the end of the 17th, going into the first part of the 18th, Mercury, decision-making communication Mercury, will be in harmony with Saturn. When Mercury... Uh, business savvy negotiating Mercury is in harmony with Saturn, it gives good practical business sense. So from the end of the 17th, the first part of the 18th, overall good for being pragmatic, realistic, sensible about business matters. On the 19th, Venus, the planet of art, planet of love, will be in a hard angle to Neptune. When Neptune is being stressed out, it brings a certain amount of fantasy and escapism. Now, Venus creatively triggering, inspiring, dreamy Neptune can really awaken the imagination a lot of this inspiring fantasy creative energies. So there can be some positive energies there, you know, being the artist. But if you're falling in love or if you're becoming infatuated with somebody on the 19th, the Venus Neptune, you could initially be kind of swept away by the romanticism, that rush of infatuation but it's not all clear. You are falling in love with love, not the real person. It doesn't mean that if you meet somebody or, or, you, or somebody you've been dating starts to talk about some really romantic things and you're getting really turned on by them, it doesn't mean that that's all going to fall apart. But it does mean that when the dust settles and there's more clarity, um, you might be looking at the situation differently. Great for artists. Romantically, you could have that rush. But just make sure you, um, you stay more realistic and grounded and for you know, a few days or so afterwards. On the 20th of January, the sun leaves conventional, practical, traditional Capricorn and goes into eclectic, progressive, alternative, unconventional Aquarius. But when the sun goes into Aquarius on January the 20th, Pluto is now, for the second time, back into Aquarius until the end of, Jan uh, end of um, August. 
2024. Pluto is all this transformational energy. Having the sun putting a spotlight on Pluto, all things Aquarius, Pluto, sun Pluto, is trying to compel a big shift, a big change. The Aquarius can be um, uh, fighting for personal freedoms, fighting for um, democracy. Aquarius is technological. Um, it's innovative. Um, it's scientific. So there's some real powerful forces that are trying to unfold that we haven't seen in 243 years. And that was a major time in history as we were coming out of the French and the American revolutions. But what that was about was fighting against the kings to find for the people to start developing their own personal freedoms. And that's the theme that's trying to unfold for actually the next 20 years. Um, but there's some kind of big shift that might be small or big, depending on who you are, on the 20th. On the 25th is the full moon. So everything that's promised, and there's a lot of positive po um, um, opportunities here and options with that new moon on the 11th. By the 25th, you get to see what's working, what's evolving, what's manifesting. January the 4th, for the first time in two years, ambitious, risk-taking um, Mars, ambitious, assertive Mars, moves into Capricorn till February the 12th. So much can be accomplished. And the first 20 days of January, the sun is still is in Capricorn till it goes into Aquarius on the 20th. Pluto has been in Capricorn since last uh, June. Um, and then on the 20th, it leaves Capricorn, goes back into Aquarius. So in January, the first 20 days, the sun's in Capricorn, Pluto's in Capricorn, Mars is in Capricorn. There's this major emphasis Capricorn is being very goal-oriented, very pragmatic, wanting to, uh, wanting to seek accomplishments. You want to look to where, how does Capricorn impact your horoscope? Um, if you are a Capricorn, then there's a lot of major new beginnings. But with the Pluto, it could be also pushing out um, um, you know, identity and projects that are no longer serving you. You know, that Pluto letting go and being reborn into new ideas. And that Mars is really wanting to assert and manifest the, all these big Capricorn goals. See, Capricorn is the tenth sign of the zodiac. Starts with Aries, and then we get to Capricorn, which is how I do my monthly, even my weekly, and certainly my yearly uh, forecast. All astrologers are looking at where are the transiting planets in relationship to your sun sign. Um, and so we just start with Aries in general is the first sign of the zodiac. And Aries is about all new beginnings. Ten signs after Aries is Capricorn. And the tenth house is about career. When the sun is at the, um, is at the top of the chart, I know you're born around 12 noon when the sun is directly overhead. So that's putting a real spotlight on your, um, your professional reputation, your sense of leadership, but putting a major focus, if you're born around 12 noon, with that sun shining in your career sector. Um, 
If you are, let's see very quickly, um, if you're a cancer, all that Capricorn energy is opposite Capricorn. And opposite deals with the other, from business partnerships to the marriage to your significant partner. And that's where there will be a lot of focus. But with all that favorable business Capricorn energies for cancers or cancer rising, the main focus might be on business negotiations and contracts and partnerships. Now, if you're an Aries, the um, Capricorn is in the 10th house of careers. Like I just got done describing how we start with Aries as the beginning of the zodiac. But if you are a Libra, then the Capricorn is four signs past Libra. And the fourth sector is home, family, real estate, whether you're moving, investing, remodeling, or there's some major um, family events or responsibilities. I went into detail with where all these planets are impacting in the January monthly, but also in the 2024 for the overall yearly forecast. So I hope I brought some light um, to what's happening. Um, the best part of the Capricorn and with these general trends is if you're if what I'm saying generally is you're, what you're hoping is um, what you're trying to manifest, then often this would give you more confidence to give it more, take more risk. Because if this is the direction you would like to go in, and the general trends in astrology are saying, this is where it's going, and then give it more. Um, or vice versa, um, it might be, depending on how it's impacting your chart, it might be a time to pull back. Um, you would really understand the push and the pull more individually if you have a personal astrology reading. Or you can always sign up for my two-question offer. I want to thank you for watching. If you'd like information on how to book an astrology reading, visit my website at gardino.co. That's dot co. Until next time, be safe and well.